Jobs have been a part of human history ever since we drew straws to see who was a hunter and who was a gatherer. But not all jobs are created equal, not in work, pay, or conditions. And considering how many jobs depend on the technology and society around them, there are bound to be some nasty careers that have been swept under the rug of history. Today, you might think that your 9 to 5 is bad. Sure, getting yelled at by your boss for misaligning a logo on a PowerPoint is bad, but I have some news for you. Your job, compared to some of the jobs in the past, is a luxury. I'm not talking about your working conditions. I'm talking about pay, work-life balance, and job satisfaction. We are lucky to live in these times, and future generations could be saying the same about us in hundreds of years. So it's time to learn how history works as we remind ourselves how lucky we are today by counting down the top 10 worst jobs in human history. That way, you'll be more thankful for your own daily grind. Oh, what? I have a posted for you. This is a great job. Mm. There you go. Number 10, Nomenclator. Let's start with something that's not gross or dirty, but is tedious to the point of downright torture. A nomenclator was the name given to a person on the side of an elite, and they were responsible for remembering the names of important people at social events in ancient Europe. At first glance, going to swanky parties and schmoozing with the upper crusts of Roman society sounds pretty easy. But the nomenclator was not only responsible for remembering the guest list, but also for recalling the intricate details of each person's life, like their family tree, hobbies, and political views. Imagine trying to remember the name of a Roman senator's third cousin twice removed while trying to keep track of the 100 other important people in the room. Add that to the fact that your payment, and possibly your life, depended on becoming a walking, talking Wikipedia article, and suddenly, the necessity to store all of that small talk in your head becomes a high-pressure job. But with such a balancing act, it's no wonder that the nomenclators were highly respected members of society. It may have more perks than toiling in the fields, but at least those farmer peasants didn't have to memorize endless lists of facts to pay their way. Number 9. Groom of the Stool If you're hearing stool and think furniture, then it's a good thing that you never applied for this job when it was advertised in the paper. The groom of the stool was responsible for assisting the monarch with toileting needs. You see, it was deemed improper for a king or a queen to clean their own behind, which meant being a royal butt wiper was seen as a divine right. Amazingly, people fought tooth and nail to secure this prestigious position, because it was a gateway to political intrigue and backstabbing. Henry VIII was a known employer who assigned the role to a top aristocrat, showing that even wealth and power couldn't spare you from humiliation. But your work didn't end there either. You'd have to pick apart the stool for signs of ill health, even having to administer an enema should a royal banquet lead to royal constipation. Okay, you might as well have just dropped your pants and laid a turd right on Mr. Venezuela's head. Number 8. Sin Eater this medieval job required no skill set or prior experience, and could be done in a day, but that didn't mean it was easy. It involved a person eating a piece of bread that was placed on the chest of a deceased person. So, what's the catch? I'm not hungry anymore. The belief was that the sin eater would take on the sins of the deceased, allowing them to enter heaven. If you haven't figured out by now, the sins wouldn't be erased. Only God can do that. But passed on, to you guessed it, the sin eater. A paltry sum of money was exchanged for eternal damnation, but there were still problems before you died. As the work was taboo, a sin eater would be shunned by society, so the job often only went to existing social outcasts forced to live on the edge of civilization, both geographically and metaphysically. For some, eating stale bread off a corpse is gross enough without the mortal life of torment or immortal afterlife of damnation, but for the downtrodden, it was worth a couple of gold coins in your palm. Number 7, Punkawala. This is another competitor for most tedious way to earn a living. No doubt you've seen early forms of the Punkawalas in comic books like Asterix, where people with giant fans would manually cool down the elites of society. But these paled in comparison to the counterpart in British-ruled India and Pakistan. At the time, sealing fans were the hot new invention, but it would be a hot minute before motorization spanned them automatically. Thankfully, they had the next best thing, elbow grease, and lots of it. Unlike the fan waivers of old, a punkawala would spend their waking hours in blistering heat, standing in one spot, pulling the controls to keep the fan going. No doubt, the torque and resistance from the pulley system would cramp your arms quicker than a simple wave of a peacock feather. But the fact that you very likely did not benefit from the cooling air enough to stop you from sweating is why this tedious job is on this list. Number 6. 
Gong farmers. This may sound musical, but we assure you, the job is anything but sweet sounding. Gong farmers were the unlucky individuals of Tudor times responsible for collecting human excrement from cesspools and privies. Yep, you heard that right. These people were literal poop collectors, except there were no pumps or modern drainage systems. The job was dangerous, disgusting, and hard work. Digging out a cesspool was backbreaking, assuming you didn't die from exposure to the fumes or a countless list of possible infections and bacteria. They were paid well, all things considered, but there was a huge cost to their reputation. Gong farmers were despised and exiled to the outskirts of city life, meaning it was better for their image to work between 9pm and 5am. Digging out raw sewage with your bare hands is bad enough, doing it in pitch black is just unfair. It really gives new meaning to the phrase dirty work, but someone's gotta do it. Number 5. Matchmaker the factory workers of London manufactured matches themselves. However, the cutting of the wood into smaller sticks wasn't the dangerous part, Victorian health and safety standards notwithstanding. The real threat came from dipping the ends of the short sticks into vats of phosphorus solution. Early into your job, there wouldn't be any signs of poisoning, but after a few years of huffing the fumes, you'd get an ailment that became known as phosphy jaw, a terrible affliction that caused your gums to abscess and give off a terrible stench of a discharge. If you'd absorbed more of the phosphorus gases, your jaw would start to take an eerie glow. But worse than a literal rotting, illuminating mouth was a remedy, amputation of the lower jaw. The work itself may have been simple, but the working conditions were some of the worst in history. Number 4. Galley Boat Rowers Next up, we have the galley boat rower, one of the most unforgiving positions a slave could have. Don't be fooled by the depictions in movies, because this physical feat was far from glamorous. For starters, these poor souls were forced to be the backbone of the ancient naval fleet, rowing tirelessly to propel ships forward over rough seas. Make no mistake, the work was grueling, so imagine how much worse it was to be chained to your seat for hours on end, sweating profusely, and being whipped if you ever slowed down. Some rowers were even chained for days, weeks, or months on end. There are even stories of slaves never leaving the boat at all, which meant sitting in excrement and disease when you were off duty, sitting at the port waiting for the next voyage. Not that things became easier on the sea. You'd be expected to charge into battle and, thanks to your change, go down with the ship should you fail to protect your master. No doubt this was a sweet release for a life of sitting in your filth and squalor in the dingy hole of a smelly ship. Number 3. Leather Tanner Whereas most other gigs on this list had a fixed time or place, Leather Tanner is one seen throughout many cultures and times, making it one of the oldest, worst jobs to date. One of the reasons for its longevity is its utility. Preparing hides has been a staple of civilization's development, with many innovations throughout its time. Yet despite all that, it still remains a horrible career. Hides are first soaked in giant pits of lime to soften the hair and tissues before the fat is scraped off by hand, which is a particularly smelly and slippery experience. Then, the clean hide would be softened further, first by submerging it in water, and then in, believe it or not, dog feces. Streamlining the assembly line made things a whole lot stinkier too, when there were dozens or hundreds of fermenting batches to work through. Number 2. Wool Fooler Another animal-oriented job that's been around for a long time is the harvester of sheep's wool. Nowadays, a simple once-over with an electric shearer is all it takes, but in the days before the light bulb, it was a lot less fun, especially when you didn't have the machines in modern chemistry to make the wool soft. Instead, medieval shearers took the freshly cut wool and kneaded it by foot in vats of stale urine. That's because the coarseness of fresh wool is caused by grease from the sheep's skin, so an alkaline solution is all it takes to make those fluffy white curls smoother. At the time, the cheapest and easiest way to get a hold of enough alkaline chemicals was to collect gallons of urine from humans. And if you couldn't find enough people to help you out, you could try public toilets. Then when you had enough of the yellow stuff collected, you'd have to knead it by feet in the tub. Number 1. Body Snatcher some viewers may think that this last entry isn't the most disgusting, and some may argue that medieval advancements justify the means, but chances are everyone can agree that this is the most immoral occupation on the list. 19th century medicine was a rapidly advancing field with new theories and practices. Leaps and bounds were made with many discoveries due, in part, to Grey's Anatomy. No, not the TV show, but the human anatomy book that detailed the inner workings of the human body for the first real time in mankind's existence. But to get up close and personal, doctors had to autopsy cadavers which meant a brand new market opened up overnight. And what a better way to make a quick buck than bring a fresh corpse to a doctor who was prepared to turn a blind eye. And with stiff competition and a low number of murder victims, body snatchers resorted to digging up fresh and not so fresh burials, or, in the case of Scottish serial killers Burke and Hare, taking matters into their own hands. Where is the body? I didn't do anything! Any job that requires you to defile a dead body or murder someone isn't a form of employment you would be proud of, especially if you had to be cunning and devious to evade the law. 
public opinion, and human decency. Lord have mercy on your soul should townsfolk figure out that you're the reason that they can't bereave their loved ones. So considering the risk-reward incentive, body snatching is hands down the worst job in human history. Now, you may be wondering why you're just hearing about these jobs now. Surely this wasn't included in your typical history curriculum. Well, there's a reason for that. To find out why, go and watch our video on why historians only care about rich people. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe to keep on learning how history works.